Today we'll be taking a look at hoops for the NES, which is a relatively straightforward pickup basketball game. But before we get to that, we're going to talk about a different hoops, specifically NBA hoops trading cards. In the late 80s, Fleer was the only card company making trading cards for the NBA, until NBA hoops cards appeared for the 1989-1990 season. The biggest hit for hoops that year was the inclusion of a David Robinson rookie card, as everyone was excited to see the Admiral in action, post U.S. Navy service. Today you can still find NBA hoops cards on store shelves, now under the Panini brand. And while hoops trading cards have featured a slew of NBA superstars over the years, the most notorious card may be this 1990 card featuring Mark Jackson who's delivering a sideline bounce pass while playing for the Knicks at the Garden. What makes this card a thing of urban legend is who's featured in the background. And no, it's not Spike Lee. Seated courtside behind Jackson to the left is Lyle and Eric Menendez, who on the evening of August 20th, 1989, armed with shotguns, gunned down both their parents. Jose Menendez was shot six times, which included a fatal shot to the back of his head. Kitty Menendez, the boy's mother, was shot a total of ten times, before being fatally shot in the face. The Menendez brothers weren't immediate suspects in the murder of the parents and wouldn't be arrested until March of 1990, meaning the picture on this card was taken after the killings and before the arrest. The Menendez brothers' trial was a national sensation, and eventually both brothers would be found guilty and sentenced to life in prison, without the possibility of parole. What's not often mentioned is that Mark Jackson would end up playing 82 games that year, averaging 10 points and over 7 assists per game. Anyway, let's take a look at NBA hoops. If you think you've played in-your-face basketball before, wait until you shoot some hoops from Jellico. You'll run and gun, jam and slam in the fastest schoolyard game in town. Here's action so real, you'll see it come to life right before your eyes. Hoops, and for exciting baseball, swing for the fences with bases loaded, both for the Nintendo Entertainment System, live action that never ends. Today we're taking a look at hoops for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Check out this title screen theme, it's not bad. In fact, spoiler alert, it's the best thing about this game. This is a basketball video game for the NES that was developed by Acom and published by Jellico. Hoops was first released in Japan in 1988 and a year later here in the States. In Japan, the game is known as Mario Junior Basket 2 on 2. Now I didn't have or remember playing Hoops as a kid back in the day. So I've got no nostalgic attachment to this game, and it's hard to put this game in the proper perspective as to what it might have been like playing it when it first came out nearly 35 years ago, so all I'm left with is my current perspective of the game, and well, it's not pretty. For the NES, I guess it's not bad, but it definitely doesn't hold up. pays homage to a half-court pickup game where you can play either one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two. -on -two. Options include selecting a score total from 10 to up to 25 points, winners or losers out, and the option of an eastern or western court, where the only difference between the two is that the western court is cobalt blue in color and the eastern court is ship brown in color. Otherwise, the change in court aesthetics are negligible. There are a total of eight selectable characters, each with their own supposed strengths and weaknesses, 
with each character getting a brief animated introduction. While the variety in players to choose from is welcomed, none of them seem to play any different from the next. So basically it boils down to some are guys, some are girls, some are black, some are white, some are tall, some are short, and some are fat, with otherwise little difference between them. While the overall graphics are nothing to write home about, one clever feature is that the score is tallied in graffiti on the wall in the background. In addition to that, the slow motion dunk sequences aren't bad by NES standards. Of course, if you look back in the 1989 Sears Wish Book, they used an image from a dunk cutscene to trick kids into thinking the game looked a lot better than it actually was. I found the one-on-one -on -one games to be extremely laboring, so I ended up playing mostly two-on-two -two games. Overall gameplay is bogged down by incessant charging fouls and the Gary Payton-like defense of your opponent. Seriously, if your opponent wants to steal the ball, they're gonna steal the ball, and there's nothing you can do about it. But when you're on defense, your opponent will casually pass right through your body like a ghost never once losing momentum, which reduces your game plan down to either simply chucking up the ball, or what I like to call the Robert Parrish approach. Robert Parrish is mostly remembered for playing with the Boston Celtics, and still holds the NBA record for regular season games played, at 1,611. Now that's durability. And if you were to look it up today, Parrish was nicknamed the Chief, after the fictitious Chief Bromden, a silent, giant, Native American character in the film One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which was given to him by former teammate and Celtics forward Cedric Maxwell, supposedly because of Parrish's stoic nature. But growing up in New England, that's not exactly the story I heard. Sure, it's based on the character in the film, but more specifically, there's a scene in the film where the mental patients, led by Jack Nicholson, played basketball against the orderlies, and the chief became the unsung hero of the game as he would spot up under the basket, score easily because he was so much taller than everyone else, then run back and clog up the lane on the other side of the court, never once bothering to leave the paint. That basket-to-basket, clog-the-paint approach is always how I heard Parrish got his nickname. And that's a secret to playing two-on-two -two in this game. Pick the taller players, pass to the one camped out in the paint, and let her rip. Also, if you've never seen One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, what are you doing? It's a fucking classic. A great movie by anyone's standards, albeit with a super depressing ending. Regardless, if you haven't seen it, check it out. As for hoops on the NES, there's not much more to say. So, I won't. Fairly open emergency? Yes, please. Uh... Oh. What's the problem? It sounds, uh... What's the problem? <laughs> What's the problem? <laughs> I'm sorry to kill my parents. Pardon me? So cool. <laughs> what? Who? Are they still there? Yeah. The people? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> were they shot? Hey, man, they were... Uh, were they shot? Yes. They were shot? Yes. We're going to see what I'm going to see. I'm going to see what I'm going to see. Who shot who? 
You came home and found who shot? I'm in bed. You know what? They're still in the house, the people that did the shooting. <laughs> Get away from <laughs> Okay, hey, uh, let me talk to Eric. <laughs> Let me, let, who is the person that was shot? My mom and my dad. Your mom and dad? My mom and my dad. Okay, hold on a second. <laughs> okay, we're on our way over there with the ambulance. Okay, I gotta go. <laughs> okay.